Warning! Spoilers ahead! But who cares? This is Michael Bay, not M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, thank God for that. Hans vlogs once or twice a week. Hello, my friends. I'm Professor Hans von Puppet. This past 4th of July weekend, as any true American should, I went and saw a Michael Bay movie. Specifically, Transformers Age of Extinction. And I liked it a lot, but I'm not gonna lie, it was absolutely just as dumb as I expected it to be. So here are the 21 dumbest things about the Transformers movie. Number one, Mark Wahlberg is clearly not from Texas where the movie is set. He sounds about as much like a Texan as I do. I think we just found a Transformer. Number two, there's no way he's surprised his daughter has a boyfriend. She's a real hottie. Number three, his daughter's boyfriend is a sexy Irish rally car driver, yet he can't seem to keep his accent straight. I thought he was Australian. What the hell is that? Number four, no matter how many car crashes and building collapses the daughter survives, though she may get a smudge on her cheek, her pink lipstick never goes away and always looks fresh. In fact, I think it's fresher at the end. Number five, we don't learn until the very end, but Optimus Prime has rockets in his feet and can fly like the Iron Giant. Wouldn't that have been very helpful earlier on? Hmm? Number six, the evil villain robot with the spaceship who is in league with the scary CIA guy Kelsey Grammer already has the scary lava that turns everything into metal, so why does he need this seed MacGuffin to make more? Number seven, why on earth would Kelsey Grammer think it's a good idea to negotiate with super powerful evil aliens with a giant black scary spaceship? No good can come of that. Number eight, when Mark Wahlberg grabs one of the evil drones at the beginning, isn't it more likely that they could track him with it than he could rewire it to use for his own purposes? Come on, people. Number nine, every casual car crash caused by the robots fighting would clearly kill half a dozen people. The streets would be red with blood, yet otherwise benevolent Optimus Prime never seems all that concerned with collateral damage. Number 10, Mark Wahlberg's character, an unemployed inventor who spends all his time tinkering with gadgets, can hold his own in a fist fight with the baddest CIA killer in the world. Number 11, if the Autobots can transform into anything just by scanning another car, why does Optimus Prime keep turning into the same red and blue semi-truck? Isn't that kind of suspicious if he's trying to lay low? Number 12, this Battle of Chicago, which apparently was Transformers 3, is so racist in everyone's mind that they're always talking about it. But when they actually go to Chicago, everything looks pretty much in good shape. 13, do Marky Mark and the gang really think it's a good idea to climb down those ropes from the evil spaceship to the CS Tower? Isn't it pretty obvious it's not gonna work? And how are they not killed when the ropes snap and smash into the building? If Bumblebee has reflexes that good to catch them, why doesn't he just win every fight immediately? 14. The robots all have different accents. There's a Japanese one, a Hispanic one, an old grizzly one, John Goodman, even an African-American tiny one. Where did they pick up these dialects? I don't know why they even speak English. 15. If Stanley Tucci, the Steve Jobs character, has truly mastered Transformium and can make it turn into anything from a toy to a gun, why build anthropomorphic killer robots that turn into cars? If they are meant to be super soldiers, why do they need to turn into Ferraris and Lamborghinis and things? Why not stackable cubes? 16. Once in Beijing, Stanley Tucci's sexy Chinese assistant says she can lose their pursuers in Hong Kong. How? They go all the way from Beijing to Hong Kong without being caught and then immediately get found in Hong Kong. How is that losing them? 17. You can stab Optimus Prime right through the heart with his giant electric sword, but when you pull it out, he's fine. 18. The John Goodman Transformer, the fat one. We got the gang back together. Hey! After fighting a ton of bad robots, eventually runs out of ammo. That implies that they actually carry ammo and need to reload. Where did they get this ammo? And if it's a tangible commodity that takes up space, where could they possibly be carrying as much as they use? 19. There's hundreds of car crashes, explosions, and flying buildings and boats and things, but no one ever gets so much as a twisted ankle or a cinder in their eye. 20. When Optimus Prime sets the Dinobots free at the end of the movie, aren't those giant dinosaur robots just gonna rampage through China now? And finally, the 21st dumbest thing in the robot movie, while we are spared Mr. Shia LaBeouf and his trademark line, no, 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 no,
All that said, though, I really kind of enjoyed this movie. It was a lot of fun. I didn't expect it to make any sense. That's what I love about Michael Bay movies. They deliver the goods viscerally. Everything looks cool. You see amazing things you couldn't even imagine happening, like a giant robot riding a steel dinosaur and throwing a tugboat, or Mark Wahlberg fixing a VCR. And even in all the overblown violence and action, it always maintains a sense of humor. Stanley Tucci's company is very visually interesting, and he's hilarious. I don't care why John Goodman's robot has a beard. I I just think it's funny when he swears. There's a certain kind of joy that I can only get from movies where I can't believe they went for it and did the biggest, silliest thing possible in the situation. Like when Optimus Prime, as a truck carrying all the principal characters, crashes into a bridge or something, he transforms in midair into a robot, flinging all the passengers ass over elbow, and he's able to tuck and roll and grab them all safely, landing without any of them getting even a scratch. That is so stupid, yet so balletically precise that I can't help but laugh out loud and clap. If you want to see a good movie this summer, go see Chef or Fading Gigolo or The Fault in Our Stars. But if you want to have a good time, while at the same time seeing something that makes you feel smart by comparison, check out a Transformers movie with an open mind. I think number two is my favorite. Thank you for watching. This film is mercifully Shia LaBeouf free for the most part, but since Bumblebee, the yellow robot, always speaks in sound samples from his car radio, he mostly says lines that Shia LaBeouf said in the earlier Transformer movies. So if you're a vegan, fair warning, there's just a taste of Le Beef in there. Be sure to like and subscribe, and by all means, share with your friends. Hey, what's your favorite stupid summer blockbuster? Mine is Edge of Tomorrow, which is actually not stupid at all.